Good evening and welcome to Middle Tennessee News. I'm Dylan Simmons. And I'm Sarah Ottman. Middle Tennessee is reeling this evening following the deadly shooting this morning at Covenant School in Nashville. Three children and three staff members from the school are dead according to the Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Metro Nashville Police is reporting the shooter was 28-year-old female Audrey Hale. She was killed in the school by two officers. According to Metro Nashville Police, this shooter was armed with at least two assault-type rifles and a pistol. Reporters say she entered the school through a side door this morning around 10. Officers got the call at 10.13 this morning and responded to the scene. Within 17 minutes, the shooter was dead. Covenant School students walked with teachers and police hand-in-hand -hand to the reunification area. That site, located at the nearby Woodmount Baptist Church, is where parents were able to pick up their children. Several schools in the surrounding area were put on a lockdown. Police have not yet released the names of the shooter or the victims. This is a developing story and we'll have more information for you as it is released. A murder-suicide shook an Antioch neighborhood. 37-year-old Valeria Bridges was fatally shot in her home in the Pepper Tree Forest subdivision. Metro Nashville police say her husband, Antonio Bridges, pulled the trigger. After shooting his wife, Bridges turned the gun on himself. All of this came after an argument between the couple around 10 a.m. Bridges' adult daughter was home at the time. She's the one who called 911. Officials say the Domestic Violence Division had no prior encounters with the couple. A Rutherford County Adult Detention Center inmate is back in custody after trying to escape this weekend. Matthew Kenimer was working on lawn care Friday afternoon at the detention center grounds when he tried to escape. Kenimer was taken back into custody after a three-hour search by deputies. He was located at a home about two miles from the sheriff's office on New Salem Highway. Kenimer is being held without bond on a felony charge of violation of probation. Global Vision Bible Church in the Mount Juliet community is making the news again. The Wilson County Director of Services has filed a lawsuit against Global Vision that dates back to 2019. The lawsuit states that the church has been building without a permit, has numerous noise complaints, and is non-compliant with the Wilson County Storm Department. The Wilson County Planning and Zoning Commission, along with law enforcement, will meet on Thursday night to discuss a possible noise ordinance and stop work order for the church. Global Vision Bible Church has not commented on the pending lawsuit. What's a better way to wrap up the month of March than seeing some new achievements made, especially by women in the community? Middle Tennessee News reporter Demetria Nelson has the story. As we continue to celebrate Women's History Month, the Diamond Youth Development Organization here in Rutherford County are helping teach the women of the future and tomorrow about confidence. The organization held its first ever conference for mothers and daughters ages 9 through 14 and talked all things women. From body positivity and puberty to self-love, friendship, and even health and wellness. Very cool. Paddles down, eyes still closed. How many other a guest panel was present to weigh in on the conversation, the look, including award-winning journalist Harriet Wallace. The conference um, is really about, you know, talking to our young girls, especially our young black girls who, as I say, are princesses who are going to grow up to be queen. Family coach Gloria Howard Smith, as well as MTSU alum and Miss United States of America 2022, LaShawn Dixon as the keynote speaker. The young ladies who attended this event learned a lot of information that will help them through the trials and tribulations of their preteen years. I learned about having confidence. I learned about be like yourself, you're beautiful, do whatever makes you feel happy. If interested in learning more about the Diamond Youth Development, visit Diamond Youth Development on Facebook. I am Demetria Nelson, Middle Tennessee News. Thank you, Demetria. An MTSU alumni as Miss United States of America just goes to show that our MTSU students are capable of anything. A Smyrna teen is being recognized for overcoming hardship after a recent accident. 
Smyrna High School teen and volleyball athlete Janae Edmondson will be honored by the Tennessee legislature for her bravery shown after she was in a car accident. She was pinned between two cars that resulted in both of her legs being amputated. Last week, she moved towards rehab in her road to recovery and has support from the community around her. The most recent act of support was the softball fundraiser held in her honor. Mount Juliet men will be making an appearance on the latest season of American Idol. In the last week of auditions, Oliver Steele will be in front of the judges. He has auditioned four or five times prior, but this was the first time he was called back for one final shot. His journey in music started from a young age by watching his father, who was a musician for years, and had been open for B.B. King. Steele was the last audition they took, and his episode will be aired on March 26th at 7 p.m. Central Time on ABC. And now Ian Wills joins us with our first look at the weather. Thank you, Dylan. We're starting off our week with a good amount of sun. All of our highs are in the low 70s and high 60s, so it seems we're finally getting out of the recent cold spell. Murfreesboro and Shelbyville both have a high of 70. Manchester, McMill, McMinnville, and Woodbury all share a high of 69. And finally, Smithville and Mount Juliet are our coldest at 67. I'll have some more info about tonight's lows in a second. Back to you guys. Thanks, Ian. Still ahead on Middle Tennessee News. A historic piece of Franklin finds a new home, and Izzy Gutierrez returns with the latest from MTN Lifestyle and Entertainment. That's coming up next on Middle Tennessee News. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're gonna get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm gonna get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, and this week, MTN reporter Izzy Gutierrez joins us with another segment of Lifestyle and Entertainment. Let's see what she has in store for today. Hello everyone, welcome back to MTN Lifestyle and Entertainment. My name is Izzy, and I'm here at Walnut House in Murfreesboro for Shuffle Play with a new band. Tell me your name. We're Dinosaur Oatmeal. Uh, I'm Sarah the Singer. I'm John, I play guitar. And I'm Kevin, I play bass. And you guys just performed. Tell me about your performance, how was it? Yeah, it was really cool. People had a lot of energy, it was really fun. Yeah, it was really dope. A lot of fun, definitely exhausting. Awesome, and where can they follow you guys at? Uh, we are Dinosaur Oatmeal Band on Instagram. Awesome, well take a look at the performance right now. 
This event is basically the coolest thing that Murfreesboro has ever seen. I want to say as of a week and a half ago, I was told we only sold five tickets and I was, I was really hoping there would be way more people at the door and there were plenty of people at the door and a bunch more tickets sold. Welcome to the first ever Shuffle Play, a new music festival holding 18 different music artists on two stages. What is that? Oh, turn the musical typing off. And the man behind the magic is 19-year-old music artist, Again? Just Blake. I feel like so happy. So happy, this is going so much smoother than I thought it was going to, and everybody's loving it. I'm bringing all of my favorite people here into one big venue and having the time of our lives. Just Blake has been making music since his freshman year of high school, and this is his first ever concert he's put on under Just Entertainment. This is the start, and I want people to call me Blake, but then Just Entertainment is because I don't want to just do music, or just do shows. Eventually, I want to branch out into all of the things. And who's headlining the event? None other MTSU student and match record sign artist, Legendary Nedge. How does it make me feel? Yeah. Bro, I just hell on my first gig. What do you mean? How does it make me feel? I'm lit. I'm lit. got to do is here in my life. Even though this is just Blake's first concert to put on, he hopes to do more in the future. Shuffle Play is a unique production for Murfreesboro and one of a kind. I love the idea of live music and tracks, bro. Hip hop, R&B, funk, whatever you want to call it, alternative, rock. There was all type of music here today. That's what it was really about, diversity. From Shuffle Play, Izzy Goody, Middle Tennessee News. Thank you, Izzy. For another segment of MTN Lifestyle and Entertainment, I personally can't wait for more concerts in the future. Plans are being made to transport a piece of history over great distances. The Lee Buckner School will be relocated by the Heritage Foundation this summer. The one-room school was built in Williamson County in 1925 and closed in 1965. It will be moved downtown to the Franklin Grove Estate and Gardens. The school will be a place for art, education, and history. The organization will also tear down a few campus structures that do not have any historical value. Members of the Franklin Historic Commission reviewed the plans for the school this week. Cannon County is making moves to crack down on illegal substance sales to minors. After complaints from locals, law enforcement is getting to the bottom of how their children acquired vapes, tobacco products, and alcohol. Compliance checks have been made all around Cannon County. Officials say that several local businesses are at fault for the ignoring of the law, and they have been cited for illegal sales. The Cannon County Sheriff's Office plans to conduct random checks on local businesses that sell these products to hopefully solve the problem. A new MTSU program is being introduced this week. The new program is called the COEURP Scholars Program. It is a nine-month research and engagement program for undergraduate students at MTSU. It is designed to bring students, professors, and community members together to address pressing urban and regional concerns. The COEURP plans to use this program to help foster the next generation of minds, address ongoing issues, and impact economic development in Middle Tennessee. Applications for this program open April 1st and stay open through May 15th. Well, the annual Walk Across Tennessee will be starting soon. The Walk Across Tennessee is a yearly competition where a group of up to eight individuals try and rack up exercise equal to walking 500 miles, or the length of Tennessee. You do not have to be with your team every time you exercise. All you have to do is use the conversion chart at the DeKalb County website and add everyone's time up. Each team, captain need, each team needs a captain to sign up at the DeKalb.Tennessee.edu. There will be a kickoff party on April 3rd at Greenbrook Park in Smithville at 6 p.m. The exercising starts on the 13th of April. Blackman High School's Collegiate Academy has renewed its contract with MTSU. 
The renewal took place in the MTSU Student Ballroom last Friday as the conclusion to the university-wide Scholars Week. The Blackman Collegiate Academy was designed to provide students with a college prep program while also providing a good quality high school experience. Academics, extracurricular activities, a research component, and life experiences are the four pillars that the Academy abides by. In the past eight years, 2,200 students have successfully completed the program and most have gone on to graduate from MTSU. Leaders of the program hope the Academy will continue to benefit students in both their high school and college careers. Par partnership provides practical training for Middle Tennessee State University nursing students. The nursing program collaborates with participants in the neighborhood's Mindful Care Adult Day program to complete a handicraft project. A professor at Middle Tennessee State presented six volunteer hours at Mindful Care as one of three assignment possibilities to introduce a collaboration to students this semester. Eight junior nursing students from two different classes have so far benefited from the Mindful Care cooperation. It will evolve into an experimental learning course that mixes regular class classroom learning, and real-world experience. And now Ian Wills is back with tonight's forecast. Ian, what do you have for us? Thanks, Dylan. Let's see what we can expect to, uh, tonight to look like. We've got clear skies across all counties, except for a cloud every now and then. Our lows will stick pretty consistently to the low 40s. Manchester and Shelbyville will have lows of 44. McMinnville, Woodbury, and Murfreesboro, and Mount Juliet will all share a low of 43. And Smithville is our lowest at 42. Not too cold outside tonight, thankfully. We also have some excessively low chance of rain. So that's another thing you won't have to worry about. But we do have some showers coming up soon. I'll have more on that when we come back with our five-day forecast. Back to you. Thanks, Ian. Still ahead on Middle Tennessee News, Ian Wills gives us a look at our full five-day forecast. And Ryan Martinelich is in the MTN Sports Den with all things Blue Raiders. That's coming up next on Middle Tennessee News. Stick around. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey. I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So Yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have Ian Wills, who has our full weather report. Welcome back. Let's check out the week ahead. Our Monday is sunny with a high of 70 and a low of 43. That's a good start to our week. We have some light wind today, but that's the only thing you should keep an eye out for. 
Tuesday, we'll see a little drop in temperature as some clouds begin to roll in. We'll have a high of 61 and a low of 33. It'll be a little colder once the sun sets, but relatively calm. Wednesday, we'll have a high of 62 and a low of 35. The clouds from Tuesday will be gone, and we can expect sunny skies all day. Even the wind will slow down, so expect good weather. Thursday is pretty similar to Monday as far as temperature goes. There will be a high of 70 and a low of 55. We may have some clouds floating around, but not enough to hide the sun. Friday is when we see the biggest change. It'll be our warmest day, and it will also be when we, that, when we have that rain that I talked about earlier. We have a high of 74 and a low of 58. Our chance of rain is high at nighttime with that 88% chance of rain. There's also some pretty high wind speeds uh, that'll vary between 15 and 25 miles per hour. That will close out our week, five day week. Uh, come back on Wednesday for our midweek forecast so you can stay in the know. Back to you guys. Thanks Ian. When we come back, Ryan Marcinovich is over in the MTN Sports Den. He will have the scoop on baseball's road trip to Boca Raton and the rest of your sports report after the break. Stay tuned. Son, love is like the ocean. You have to tread the oh, waters. Oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Jessica, will you go to prom with me? Yes. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. If I can go back and change it all, I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just a little one. I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Natural disasters are a fact of life in the U.S. And between activities and school, chances are you won't be with your kids when they happen. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids can help your children feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely gonna call her right home. Welcome back. Kicking things off here in the sports den, Blue Raider baseball just got back from their trip to Boca Raton where they were swept by the Florida Atlantic Owls. All three games featured MTSU leads early in the sessions, but the Owls' bats would heat up before the Blue Raiders could even enjoy a lead. Friday's game saw Florida Atlantic score 13 runs total, including four runs in the first inning and five in the seventh inning, and the Blue Raiders left 15 runners stranded on base. Saturday and Sunday's games were closer in score, but similar results as the Owls would go on to win 6-2 and 5-7, respectively, behind eight combined hits from Dylan Goldstein and Jackson Ross. Briggs Rudder, however, had a three-run home run for the Blue Raiders Friday, his first of the season, and Brett Coker had seven hits for the weekend. The Blue Raiders fall to 11-12 and on the season, and their next game will be on the road in Alabama to face off against the Crimson Tide on Tuesday. However, the Blue Raiders softball team found more success over the weekend while they were down in Louisiana. MTSU got their second consecutive Conference USA Series win on the season following doubleheader victories against the Bulldogs on Saturday behind solid pitching from senior Gretchen Mead and sophomore Kerry Munn. Mead kicked things off with a complete game, giving up two runs while striking out nine batters, while junior outfielder Amaya Harris batted two runs in early, en route to a 5-2 victory. 
Mudd found similar res results as well, completing her start, allowing only three hits and one run in the 2-1 to -one victory. Sunday's match, however, saw the Blue Raiders fall to the Bulldogs 4-1 to -one, with Anise Harvey batting the lone run in for the Blue Raiders. The weekend brought the Blue Raiders record to 23-8 on the season and will now play host this weekend, facing off against Florida Atlantic with their first game on Friday. Moving on to the tennis courts, the men's tennis team's trip out west did not go as planned as they fell to Oklahoma and Texas Tech. The trip started in Norman against the Sooners, where the Blue Raiders fell 4-0. Doubles partners Oscar Brostrom Polson and Francisco Rocha managed a victory against the Sooners' number one doubles team. However, it wasn't enough to score the overall doubles point for the Blue Raiders, and it was the only bright spot on the day. Sunday also saw Brosham, Polson, and Rocha win another doubles match along with senior duo Stein, Slump, and Pavel Modal, securing the doubles point this time. However, the momentum swung towards the Raiders, the Red Raiders, as they would fight back to win the overall match 4-2. Freshman Andre Horak secured the only singles point for the MTSU team, marking his 15th singles victory of the season. The Blue Raiders will be back on the road on Friday where they head over to Memphis. And just like the men, the women's tennis team was on the road, but they were down in Alabama A&M territory and won 6-1. to one. The Blue Raiders swept all three doubles matches with seniors Love Star Alexis and Muskan Gupta winning on court one, six games to one. It was much of the same on the singles courts as MTSU won the courts one through five, including victories from Alexis, Gupta, fellow senior Noel Morrow, freshman Sana Garakani, and junior Lily Sophie Schmidt. Women's tennis will be back home at the Adams Tennis Complex for the first time in six weeks on Friday to face CUSA opponent Western Kentucky. So be sure to check it out. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Ryan. MTSU is known for its incredible theater program, and that makes it all the more fitting that today is World Theater Day. It is celebrated every March 27th and has been around since 1961. This day celebrates the impact and prominence that theater has on our world today. It's also a day that allows us to remember the importance that theater can have on our own lives. World Theater Day also serves as a way to inform governments, institutions, and politicians who have not yet realized the value of theater. Thank you for joining us for Middle Tennessee News. I'm Sarah Altman, joined by Dylan Simmons, Simmons sorry, Ryan Martinovich, and Ian Wells. If you missed this or any show, you can watch them on our website, middletennesseenews.net. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media sites, on Facebook slash Middle Tennessee News or at Middle TN News on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. We'll see you on Wednesday, March 29th for our next show. Son, love is like the ocean. You have to tread the oh, waters. Oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Jessica, will you go to prom with me? Yes. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just a little more. If I could go back and change it all, if I could go back, I would. But I can't. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. 
One day, he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Natural disasters are a fact of life in the U.S. And between activities and school, chances are you won't be with your kids when they happen. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids can help your children feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm going to drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text-to-emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely going to call a ride home.